Yo, Darius Fred here. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm currently working on a few films and I've been on a few location scouts. Thought this might be a good opportunity to bring you guys along, you know, like chat about the whole location scout thing. Scout the S's go. Houston flight. Everybody does it a little bit different, okay? It depends on the scale of the shoot, the size of the production, your writing process, yada, yada, yada. I'm gonna take you on one of my scouts, share my process with you, things that I look for, and maybe you'll find it useful. Vaughn is the lead actress in this film. We're about to scout her spot. First and foremost, I like to bring a camera. Gotta have a camera. Time of day. I try and get to the location at roughly the same time of day that I'm thinking about shooting. Not always possible. It's also helpful to know where the sun is gonna be at what time of day. So when you're filming near windows, you have an idea of what time of day you might get some light peeking through the window. 5 p.m. It's right over there, so it's just gonna be a lot of shadow over there, which is good to know. So at no time do we have sun blasting through this window or that one, just mainly these windows back here. The app I'm using is the Sun Seeker app. There are plenty of these little sun tracker apps out there. Take your pick, they all pretty much do the same thing. Old houses. If given the choice, I would rather shoot in an older house, like all day, every day. Older houses tend to be more filmic. They tend to be more photogenic. The newer houses are just kind of like boxy and clinical. Hunt for the shot. The thing with shooting is like, you gotta like hunt for the shots. And sometimes they can be like the weirdest angles you wouldn't even think of, but you would never know if you don't hunt for it. There are shots that I think I want, and then there are shots that I don't even know that I want. The only way to find those shots is to play around with the framing and just explore, experiment right there. You might not use any of the angles you find. It's just good to explore and see what your options are. Try looking at the scene from different focal lengths. You, you want to keep the scene that you're intending to shoot in mind or just kind to keep the script front of mind so that you can suss out like you know where do I want my actors to be say if it's going to take place on this couch you know you can be thinking in terms of shot reverse shot while you're doing your location scout if you're lucky enough to have an actor on location as you scout use them take loads of pics if you don't have an actor present use use your sound guy use a producer use a friend bring someone bring anyone and then take a step uh, this way you just need like a warm body in the space that you can photograph and experiment with. Walk through. So whatever your regular routine is, mm -hmm. uh, just mimic it. You don't have to put anything on. Okay. Um, I just want to see what you normally do and then see what opportunities we have. If you have one of your actors there and you have the time, you might as well do some walkthroughs. Sometimes how you imagine something playing out isn't the best choice when you see the physical space. Sometimes people will like put the mirror on the stairs and sit down on the ground like when they're here. Like here? When we get like ready for stuff. Oh, like that. Yeah. Sweet, yeah. You can figure a lot of these small things out by walking through a scene or two. Audio. You wanna check for audio, like you wanna see how reverberant some rooms are, if you're gonna have to bring sound blankets, planes, trains, automobiles. So if you're like next to a road that's very busy or you're next to a highway, you kinda wanna listen and see if you can hear, you know, distant traffic, uh, car horns, if you're next to an intersection. It's not so much about finding a place that has no audio issues. I mean, most places will have a few. You just don't want to pick a place that has nothing but sound issues unless you want to ADR and fully the whole thing. But again, planes, trains, automobiles. Script changes. You will almost always, you know, make little small changes to your script based on what you find in your scout. The imaginary location you had in your head when you were writing it is obviously going to be very different than the real location you have right in front of you. Naturally, there will be some little tweaks and so forth, but I like to find little things that I can like write into the script. This is a dope piano, so maybe you want to make some variation in the script to incorporate things that are already on the location that you didn't otherwise know about. When I scout, I'm looking for those little small things that I can use to add texture, things that are unique to that location, things that just look interesting on camera. Could be, could be pets, it could be animals, it could be weird angles. If you find it interesting, odds are nine times out of ten your audience probably will too. Blue Stairs? Are you seeing this? Is this? <laughs> this is like, oh, nice. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Blue stairs. 
I am a fan. Explore. Go beyond the spaces you're thinking of shooting in. Look at everything. Worst case scenario, you find something interesting and you decide to change one of your scenes around, right? Like you like the backyard, you think it looks dope. So all of a sudden, the conversation that happened in the kitchen becomes the conversation that happened in the backyard. Keep it flexible. They had this really cool like outdoor garage slash shed hybrid looking thing. Very weird, very unique. It's like these kinds of little like oddball discoveries are what I live for. This vibe is pretty dope in here. Brick wall. I am liking it. Just kind of snapping photos of everything that might be useful. You will be surprised at what comes in handy when you're planning out your shots later on. Outlets. I like to take pics of the outlets. So this way, when I look back through these scout pics later, I can remind myself of if there were any outlets and if so, where they're located. Now, if you're scouting really old houses or remote locations, not a bad idea to bring an outlet tester. Nothing sucks more than planning to use a certain outlet and then finding out that said outlet is not functional. Permits. If you're planning on shooting at any national parks, busy streets, tourist areas, you should check with your local film office to find out if there's any permits you need to secure to get clearance to shoot in those places. And depending on what your deadline is, the sooner the better because some of these things take like two to three months to clear. If you're scouting a place for your first short film, you're probably not gonna catch everything and that's okay. Do the best you can, learn as you go. The more you do it, you'll fall into your own process. Take it one step at a time. If you're new to the channel and you're still figuring your way around this filmmaking thing, I've got some other videos that might help. If you're having trouble finding actors and you live in a small town, got you fam. If you're having trouble finding crew for your film, you're just starting out, you don't know anybody, we got a video for that too. Hashtag Booyakusha. Thank you for watching. Keep hustling. Deep Rit out.